Let me ask you something. Have you ever purchased a product because somebody recommended it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a restaurant because somebody said, hey, they got really good food there, you want to try it out? Mm -hmm. Right? Have you ever um, not bought something because somebody said, that's no good, or that's defective, or it's not what they advertised? You ever done that? Without trying it yourself, right? Well, why do we buy things that people say are good and not buy things that they say are not good? We trust them. Trust them. That's right. You trust them because you're getting the word from, you know, there's a difference then in, say, Corey telling uh, Ronnie about something and the salesman telling Ronnie about something, right? Because the salesman has something to gain, right? He's going, he wants that commission, right? So we trust our friends, right? We trust those that we know. We've built, what, relationships with them, and we know that they're from the truth-teller tribe, as we tell our grandsons. You know, we're from the truth-teller tribe, and we're going to tell the truth, you know, no matter what it is. You know, Pam's the one who checks everything out of our family. She'll, anything we buy, she'll check it out check it out, check it out. Then we're buying last year's model because she's been checking it out for so long. But, 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 uh, but in all seriousness, she, she does save us a lot, of, a lot of grief by checking out products and seeing what people say about it. Just an overall thing. And it's good to check, check things out for yourself, isn't it? Or, or have somebody tell you, ask around before you go and make a big purchase or even a little purchase. And it's that reputation that, that going and, and and telling people about something we're going to talk a little bit about today. But we're also going to be talking about come and see. Come and see. That's some, some unusual words, isn't it? You know, sometimes those words are used for good things. Come and see. Come on, why don't you see something? You know, sometimes they're bad. They might start off with hold my beer. And, you know, I'm going to show you something. You know, that usually doesn't end well. Sometimes that engine's an emergency room in business, but that does not copay. But but today we're going to talk about a good kind of come and see. Okay? And the story that, that Peggy read for us in scripture is talking about John recognizing that Jesus is the Christ, right? He says, Behold the Lamb of God. Right? And he, he and baptizes Jesus, and, and then the next day, um, here comes Jesus again. He's walking along. And, and John says it again. He says, Behold the the Lamb of God. And some of his disciples, because people had disciples other than Jesus. They had people who followed them, who, who studied their teachings and what they did. And so they call them disciples as well, because they're of that disciple, that person. But two of his disciples uh, hear this and they want to know more about it. So they decide to follow Jesus and see where he's going what he's all about, hear his teaching, see what he has to say. But they don't get too close. You know, they kind of lag behind, you know, following him, but not too close, but close enough where they can see him, but, you know, hopefully he doesn't see them, because they just want to see what he's all about. And Jesus knows they're back there, and, and he finally turns and asks them, you know, what do you want? <coughs> what is it you want? And I could just see the... the uh, Andrew and Philip standing there, and they're caught off guard, right? Have you ever been caught off guard? Somebody asks you a question like that. What are you here for? And I can just see him going, um, you, uh, tell him something. Tell him something. I don't know. Uh, where, are you, where are you saying that? Uh, um, you know, and Jesus knew what they were at, what they really wanted, right? They had a million questions about what he was doing and how he, what, what were his teachings? That's what they really wanted to know. But they couldn't come up with that and just say, you know, say that. They, they came up with, where are you going? You know, where are you going? You know, you see people a lot of times, you know, they get caught in that situation where somebody asks them that, that question that they don't really want to answer. And they do what? They, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm good. Or I wasn't following you. I was just on the way, you know, here. But the disciples were brave enough to act, answer and said, you know, I want to go with you. What did Jesus say? He said, come and see. Come and see where I'm saying. Follow me. 
Come and see. And, and it's reported differently in different Gospels. But in here he says, come and see. Come and see. Now that's some kind of strange words, isn't it? Come and see. In other words, what he's saying is, come on, come follow me. And you'll, and you'll see where I'm staying. You'll see what I'm about. You'll come to learn all about me in the days ahead. Right? And so they go and it says that he, they spent a lot of time or the rest of that day with him and listened to him and, and, and found out more about him. They started developing that what? Relationship that we a lot of times talk about because we're all in a relationship of some kind, right? Some of us are in a marriage relationship. Some of us might be in dating relationships. Some of us might be sister relationships, parent-child relationships, friend relationships. There's all kinds of relationships, but they start this relationship as a follower of Christ. They're learning more about him, right? He said, come and see, and they came to check it out, right? Did at some point in your life somebody say, come and see? Did at some point somebody ask you to come to church and say, come and see? Did somebody ever ask you about what's, what's this Christianity all about? And you say, come and see. You know? Why don't you come to church with me this Sunday and, and see what worship is all about? You know? If you can't say that to somebody, you're in the wrong church. If you're not proud enough to say, we worship God every Sunday, and it's not about the ministry. And it's not about the music. It's about God's presence in our, in, in, our, in our midst. And the fellowship that we share and the love that we feel that comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you can't say that, something's wrong. Something's wrong. You should have enough pride to say that. You should... Pride's a bad thing. You should have enough pride in this particular thing to say, be able to say... Uh, you know, we have something special going on there. And you know, what if you said that? Do you think they would come? Do you think they won't have to come? He said, man, you got to come and see. you got to come and see what we got going on over at Ledbetter Christian Church. Man, people there are so friendly. You know, I've never seen anybody walk out of here and say, man, that's an unfriendly group there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. It is. Y'all are a very friendly group. And you come and you, and you fellowship and you're very welcoming church. And that's a good thing. Because that's what being the church is all about, is to be welcoming. And it's following in the footsteps of Christ when you do that. Christ was always welcoming. And that's what we should strive to do. But what about this come and see? Do we, do we go and say it excitedly, or do we come and say, well, you know, uh, come on third Sunday. Third Sunday's good. They got food. <laughs> Yeah, do we use that as an excuse, which is a good excuse, but I mean, do we, do we, do we use that excuse, or do, are we so excited, you know, Pam was talking about, what if you found out uh, you could buy horses for a dollar, now I'm going to tell you what, you can't see their faces, but I see their faces because I'm sitting back here, I'm going to tell you, Allie's eyes got about this big, <laughs> <laughs> I sense trouble at your house this afternoon. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, we get excited about things, don't we? You know, if you had to win a lottery ticket after you secured a lawyer and, and, and went and got the money so you wouldn't get killed for your ticket or something like that, but wouldn't you be excited to tell your friends, you're not going to believe this. I won the lottery. I won the lottery, right? You would be so excited you'd want to tell people, right? Please don't tell on yourself, you greedy. <laughs> oh, I, you know, there, there's something to be said for that. But, but, you know, but wouldn't you be excited about that? What if you got a new car? Do you hide it in your garage so nobody can see it? No. No, you drive that thing around, right? If you got a car you're proud of? Right? Yep. What if you got a new fishing pole or a new rifle or a cross, a cross uh, what do they call it? Crossbow. Crossbow. There you go. What if you got one of those? You going to show it to somebody? Yep. You going to put it in the closet, make sure nobody sees it. No. Right? No, that don't happen. What if you got a new dress? You just buy a new dress and put it in the closet. I ain't wearing that. It's pretty, but I ain't wearing that out. I don't want anybody to see me in that pretty dress. <laughs> Maybe they can bury me in that, but I don't want anybody to see me in it until that day. You know, we don't do that, do we? 
if we're proud of something or if we're excited about something, a new purchase or, or, or something, something of that nature, we go out and tell people about it, right? We go out and say, you got to come see this. Look at my new kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this new truck. Come over and let me show you my new rifle. But do we say, hey, come on over and let's go to church? You say, no, that's what we put in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> that's not meant to be shared. But what we should be sharing is saying, come and see, come and see. I got something exciting for you. I want you to know something. I want you to know that relationship that I have with Christ because, man, it is so uplifting and so fulfilling. It is that thing that carries me through the rough time. It's exciting. And beyond all that it will do for me today, it promises me all eternity in the presence of God, and I want you to be right there by my side. Amen. Amen. You see, you've got to have excitement. You've got to be fired up. You've got to wake up. <laughs> right? Yeah. So often we just drag our feet as we go through life. And, you know, I looked and we were stopping and got gas, and I saw everybody doing life. You know? There are some people there that had, I don't know all they had to do. I didn't stop and ask them, but they were all going in different directions, right? None of them seemed like they might be dressed for church or even had church in their mind. Maybe they're watching on TV. I'm not judging. Or maybe they just dressed casually at their church, but even, anyway. But, but they didn't look like they had church on their mind. Now, I'm not judging them. I shouldn't be assuming that. I'm just saying that's kind of what it looked like, right? And we go out into a world like that, and we start doing life, and we're busy. We're busy and we forget about our faith. We forget about how we should live and, and the excitement that comes from having Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, there should be a peg in your step. There should be an excitement when you talk about Christ. There should be excitement when you talk about your church. This is the place we gather to worship. Come and see. Come and see something special happens here on Sundays. Come and see. That's what Jesus said. Come and see what I'm all about. Right? Yeah, right? Come and see. I want you to see that I love people. I want you to see that I'm unconditional in my love. I want you to see that I can heal people. I can walk on water. I want you to see. I don't want you to have any doubt that I'm the Son of God because one day they're going to hang me on a cross to pay for your sins. And on the third, they're going to bury me, and on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And you know, I think the disciples didn't quite get that until it, it happened. And I'm not judging them because I don't think I got it either. We have the benefit of looking in the Bible and reading exactly you know, what happened and account of what happened. So we're, we kind of got a cheat sheet. Yeah. You know, but the, the disciples, the early disciples, didn't know that, but they had to know there was something special about Jesus because not know, too many people I know walk on water. Actually, I don't know any. But, but you know what I'm saying? I don't know too many people who perform miracles, who heal the blind. Right? So they had to know there was something special. And I think even in that first day, there was something special. And they knew it because what does it say Andrew did? The first thing he did is he went and told his brother, right? He went and told his brother Pete, we found the Messiah. And I'm sure he didn't go, hey, Pete. <laughs> Got this guy, I think he might be that Messiah we're looking for. Maybe you want to go? You want to, you want, you want to go fishing instead? Well, but, you know, I don't think he did that. I think he came excited. I think there was an excitement in his voice. Peter, we have found the Messiah. The one we've been waiting for. You need to come see. You need to come and see. And Peter did, didn't he? And what happened to Peter? He just faded away after that, right? Nope. No. No. He was the rock, right? He's the one that Christ built his church on, right? You know, it's important that Andrew, you know, Andrew brought Peter. Andrew didn't get the church built on him, did he? But he was one of the first. But why didn't, how come he was punished and not been the rock? Why couldn't he be the rock? Because everybody's got a job. <coughs> Everybody's got a different job. And Peter was the one that was going to be the rock. Andrew, if you read through the Gospels, you'll find out Andrew is the one who brings people to Christ. Repeatedly, we see Andrew bringing people to Christ. 
He said, come and see. Come and see. What about the other one? What about Philip? What did he do? He went and saw um, Nathaniel, right? Nathaniel, and he said, come and see. I think we found the Messiah. Now, this doesn't tell us a relationship between the two. I'm assuming they're best friends or they're good friends. Because sometimes we go to our friends and we say, hey, you know, I think there's a good movie playing. You want to go see it? Or, but, but I think it was more than that. I think he came and said, you've got to come see. This is the guy. This is the guy, not a guy. This is the guy. The guy we've been waiting to, to, to come. The Messiah. The one from God. You need to come. And, and was he reluctant? Yeah, he was reluctant. He's like, ah, you know, I don't want to walk over there. <laughs> I've heard this before. I've heard this song at Davis. You ever meet people like that? Mm -hmm. Come to church. Uh -huh. It's so early. Sunday, it's the only day I got off. I don't know. I don't go. No, 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 no. Come see. Come see. I want you to come see because I want you to experience it. I want you to experience that relationship with Christ because it's so good for me. I'm so excited about what He's done for me. But as much as He's done for me, He'll do for you. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see and develop that relationship with Jesus Christ. Come and see. Don't you think they deserve an invitation? Yep. Is this it? No. Is, I still see empty seats. It can't be it. Right? I'm glad you're all here. But this it can't be it, can it? It's a pretty big county, isn't it? Yep. It means there's a lot of people need to be reached, doesn't it? That means a lot of people need to hear the message. Come and see. Come and see what it's all about. Tell them your story. Tell them how you experienced that personal relationship. You can't be, but you, you can't, you can't be like a lot of us are and, and follow Jesus from afar. You can never learn about Jesus by following him from afar. You gotta come see. Right? You've got to conceive. You've got to spend time at the Master's feet to experience Him, right? Yep. You can see Him from back here, but you can't experience Him from back here. You can see what He's doing, but until you live it, live with Him, you're not experiencing life at its fullest. You're missing out. Come and see. Come and see if what I'm telling you is true. Because I know that it is. I know that it is because I've experienced it. And those of you who have, have experienced it, you know. You know. And you know the good news can't be, can't be squashed, right? It started with 12. We have more than 12 in this room. Just Maryland. No. <laughs> we, I'm kidding. We have, a good um, we have more than 12 in this room. Look at what we could do if we had a close personal relationship with Jesus Christ. How do you get that? You spend time in the Word. How can you learn about Jesus if you're not trying to learn about Jesus? You know, don't take the pastor's word for it. It's right here. If you don't got a Bible, let me know. I'll get you one. I'll get you one so you can read it. We'll let you borrow one from the church. I'll replace it if they don't bring it back. But, but what I'm saying is, you're going to find out about Jesus in the Gospels here. You're going to find out about the early church as we go through the New Testament. But the most important thing that you can do is to come and see. And then ask somebody else to come and see. You know, Jesus gave his disciples a commission, right? The Great Commission. To go and make what? Disciples. Disciples of all nations. And they've been working on it for years and years. But there's still work to be done. It can't end with us. We have to pass it on. We have to have the energy. Say, I'm old, man, pastor, I'm old. I my bones hurt when I'm not too. But, but what I'm saying is everybody has something they can do. 
Andrew couldn't be the rock, but Andrew could bring people to Christ. Right? Maybe your gift is just making potato salad on Sunday, third Sunday. Maybe that's your gift. Maybe your gift is quilting. Maybe your gift is, is being just the friendliest person you can be at the back door when somebody comes through and making them feel welcome. Maybe your gift is the piano or music. Maybe, there's all kinds of gifts to use. You've got to find your gift and find a way to get to people and say, come and see. Come and see. Come and see my Lord and Savior. And if we do that, we can change the world. Not me. You. Because I have a set of friends, and each of you has a set of friends. It's like a pebble being thrown into a pond. It starts off with a small ripple, but what happens? It grows. It grows. It gets bigger and bigger as it races towards the shore. We're all racing towards the shore, aren't we? How many people are we going to take with us? Don't be afraid of them. Andrew wasn't afraid of Peter saying, ah, oh, we won't fish. He was excited. He went and told. Philip wasn't afraid of what Nathaniel would say. He knew he might be down, but he went and said it anyway. Maybe you have relatives that don't know Christ. Maybe you have friends that don't know Christ. Maybe you know strangers. No, that makes sense. Maybe you'll encounter strangers. <laughs> you can't know strangers. <laughs> my, my bad, my bad. Maybe you'll encounter strangers this week that, that don't have a place to worship, who don't know Christ. Tell them to come and see. Tell them to come and see what, what we do here, how we worship, how we praise God for, in His presence here, and how He sustains us throughout the week and the troubles that we'll encounter down times. He'll be with us in our good times. Come and see is what I tell you. Just as Jesus told his disciples. Come and see. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.